Boom. Huzzah! Welcome to the late night chat with uh, this guy, that guy, and the other one. Um, yep, that's that's about as funny as I can be at this point. <laughs> so, uh, Blender, um, we're going to go over basics. Uh, anybody who's watching this later, if you go to the um, Discord for Blender and the Blender resources, there's going to be a list of all the shortcut keys that I could think of. It's not an all the shortcut keys because there's so many, but it's the ones that I was using while I was getting ready for this. So it should click. Uh, all right, uh, Zach Pierce, you guys gonna like roll along with me while we do this? Yep, that's the plan. Yeah, I got my I got it open over here. It, it's on a separate screen, so I got to kind of like pivot <laughs> to the side to to use it. So I might be I'm not might not be super fast, but I want to follow along for sure. It's all good. Yep. Um, let me know. I know my screen's a little laggy for you guys, so let me know if I need to slow down. Um, or if I do something and it skips, and you're like, how'd you do that? Just ask. Sure. And stop me. Uh, okay, so first off, just real quick, um, if you go down here when you open up a new Blender file and you click 2D animation, it's going to open up Blender's like custom... Uh, like 2D stuff. You got your timeline at the bottom, pretty standard brushes, all this. Um, and this is all great, uh, you know, for exactly what it is. Like you can come in here and you can draw on stuff. And it, it's, oh man, I wish we had a free tool like this, you know, 10, 15 years ago that was as good as this for um, drawing and animating and stuff. And then, you know, you can keyframe this. This, this really does work like pretty much every other keyframe thing. Uh, you move over, whatever. Okay, so this is something that's worth messing around with at some point, but for what we're doing and what we're probably gonna wanna do, this is uh, not super important and not super useful. It, some people might use it. I, I don't wanna mess around with this stuff. Um, so, we're going to open up a general so we're here to general i'm going to save this and this is your basic blender block uh this is what you start off with when you open up any scene from the general tab what you're going to see is this block that's got the orange highlight on it that means it's selected uh if you come up here and you left click on this little thing here this is your light source uh and this thing here is your camera Super basic stuff. Uh, let me pull up my little list. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so, so th this is like Blender 101 um, starting off. So if it's boring, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, at the top of our little cheat sheet for uh, hotkeys, we have tab. Tab is super important here because if you use your left mouse, uh, hopefully you've got a three button mouse, perfectly with a scroll wheel. Um, hopefully you can, you can kind of finagle stuff to make it work without it, but it's a pain. So you're going to left click your square or your, your cube here. Um, and you'll notice it's got the little orange bounding box around it. That means you've selected it. So if you hold, well, you can either hold it or tap it, but if you press tab, it's going to bring up this little radial here. This little radial is what mode you're in. So right now we're in object mode. It just means that um, I can't like grab a vertice vertex, vertice, vertices, vertex. I can't grab a vertex here and manipulate it. I can do basic stuff like if I hit S, I can scale it. Uh, if I hit G and G is the move then you can move it around um, kind of however you want. But the problem, well, so this is really useful for a couple of reasons because, let's see if I can show it to you. So, By the way, was, when I pressed tab, I didn't get the radial menu. Did you not? Likewise, I did not either. Okay, so there is a preference for that. So go up to edit, go down to preferences, and let's find this tab for radial menu. 
Da, da, da. Is it there? Is it here? I know it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Okay, key map. See key map here. If you go over and down, tab for Pymi. Just check that, and now it should work. Got you. Yeah, it's working now. Thanks. Sweet. All right. Awesome. So um, you see this little. It's not really getting bigger. Uh, it's staying the same size. Okay. So this little thing right here is your 3D cursor. You can move this thing around, but what I want you to notice is that when I move the box or the cube, you see this little dot, this really tiny little orange dot right here. This is your origin. So that means that like when you're shaping this thing, when you're moving it around, when you're pivoting it, rotating and all that stuff, typically it's set to move based on where the origin is. If you are in object mode and you move something around, it moves the origin with it. But if we hit tab and go into edit mode, you'll notice it looks different now because now I can select a single vertices and I can hit G and grab it and move this thing around. Um, like, kind of like in Photoshop, um, where control A selects everything, it's just A in this. So if you want to grab everything that you're in, just hit A and it's going to select everything and then hit G, you can move it around. And you see when I do this, it leaves the origin of the object here. So this can be kind of a pain if you pop back out the object mode and start trying to rotate. Instead of it rotating around the center of the, the thing you're trying to rotate, it's going to rotate it around that point. Sometimes you want that. Sometimes you don't. Um, but if you're like, why is my thing moving real weird? Um, it's probably because you move the whole thing in edit mode instead of an object. Uh, yeah, and I just saved you like four hours trying to figure that out because that's how long it took me first time. Uh, let's see. Shift when I'm a. in uh, object mode and I press G, it's not it doesn't grab it. Is that the way it's it's supposed to work? Do you have it selected? Um, left click it. Make sure the little orange highlights around it. Okay. Now try. All right. Yeah, there it goes. Thanks. Uh -huh. And then I don't know if you're about to say this, but is there a way to quickly like get the object to snap back to its original position where the origin is in the center? Uh, control Z. <laughs> yeah. Undo. Okay. Yeah, so once you move it off of that origin, you can't get it to snap back. You can. Um, actually, yeah, no, you, you can. I'll show you how to do that. Um, just because it's going to happen eventually. So let's say we move this over here. Um, Oh, check this out. See how it's like moving very snappy? Mm -hmm. That's not that's not lag. It's doing that. Um, and when weird stuff starts happening, it's probably because you accidentally hit a hotkey. Mm -hmm. So look for stuff that is highlighted blue up here. Um, so I know for a fact it's this. It's snap. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't remember what the hotkey for it is. But I hit it randomly sometimes. If it starts being weird when you're doing that stuff, just look up here. And you can just click it, it turns it off, and it's going to move back where it's supposed to. So if you have a problem where you've got an object and you've been doing stuff and you have saved and closed out, you can't control Z back to the point where your origin is where it needs to be. What you do, you select your object. And uh, I think, let me see, it should be on the hotkeys here. But um, I think it's Shift S. Yeah, so Shift S brings up, Shift S is going to let you move your 3D cursor to your object or object to your 3D cursor. So what you want to do, this is, this is the easiest way I figured out how to do this. You're going to select your object, 
you're going to hit shift s to bring up this menu and you may have to hold it um nope you don't have to hold it. uh you bring up shift s and you're going to do selection to cursor and because it's already where that is it's not working so that, that's your first like try to do it uh so okay. what we'll do is we will now come up to object up here in the top left it's going to drop down you guys see set origin this is the easiest way to do it um the other way is the dumb way and i forgot so uh origin to geometry and when it says geometry that's literally just the geometry of the object you're working with and it's going to find a center point between all of that geometry and it's going to drop your origin right back there now if you want to reset your box exactly back to where the 3d cursor is that's when you hit shift s selection to cursor and it's going to pop back there Gee um Basic mouse stuff, uh, left click is going to select the objects. Middle, if you hold the middle button, that's going to let you do this. It's going to let you spin this thing around. Mm. It's going to let you go up. It's going to let you go down and do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, I say all kinds of fun stuff. It just lets you move around. So um, what you're going to want to do starting off, it's the easiest thing to do. It'll, it'll, it'll be second nature to you. So there is a menu that is always either hidden or visible on the right side of what you're working in. The, 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 what do you call this? The panel you're working in, I guess. If you hit in for info, it brings up this little sidebar here on the right. If you select an item, then it's going to let you look at all the data it's going to let you see if it's uh rotated weird you can reset all that stuff back to zero it's going to let you see the scale um and come down here to view is it view yes it's view so view is kind of a universal tab uh this is where you'll get to mess with your focal length of whatever the camera is that you've selected um it's going to let you change clip start clip end uh, but what we want is right over here where it says 3D cursor. So we're going to click this for now. And now when you spin, it's going to spin you around the 3D cursor. Now you can set this to a specific object. And when you get into, if you ever get into really detailed stuff, sometimes you want to do that. Um, that way you can keep track of the thing you're, you're actually working on. But not always uh hey what's up lynn all right great so uh yeah uh right click <laughs> uh uh right click is literally just going to pull up this menu it's going to let you copy paste dupe um it, it lets you like shade smooth which gives you this fun effect we're probably not going to use much of that mm -hmm. uh, all right. Uh, let's look at the list here. Uh, oh, uh, Lim, in the the chat, there is a link to a Blender shortcut cheat sheet that I made. Um, don't know that you'll need it because you're pretty familiar with it, but never hurts to have a cheat sheet. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Scale. Okay, uh, that was the other thing. Okay, so um, when you have something selected, S is the shortcut for scaling. G is the shortcut for moving. Uh, if you don't want to have to like hold anything down. Um, and with both of those, uh, if you're going to scale something, you can hit the axis you want to scale it on. So let's say we're going to scale it on the x-axis. And then it will scale it just like that. So you can, you have a lot of control over how that works. Uh, if you just want it to be tall, you can scale it on the Z axis. Uh, yeah, and the same goes for your movement. If you hit G and you want to, you don't want it to like change, go up or down or whatever, you can hit X and move it straight along the X axis. Y moves it straight along the Y axis. You can do this by holding the middle mouse button 
and moving it and then a lot to an axis. But uh, I think it's frustrating sometimes and it can just be a lot quicker to just hit the axis you want to move it on. So when you're saying hit X, Y, and Z, you're saying literally hit those keys X, Y, and Z. Uh -huh. So after you hit G and you've grabbed it and you can move it around, if you just press X, it moves around the X axis. Z, move around the Z axis. And um, in this, if you want to cancel an action that you're doing, right click. Uh, I would say you almost always want to right click off of something because if you left click, you might select something you don't mean to. So right clicking is pretty safe. So now let's talk about a couple of these modes. So if you um, hit tab, bring this up. Object mode is literally what's going to let you just grab individual objects out here. Uh, edit mode, again, lets you grab points or edges. If you want to grab an edge, you can grab an edge, or you can grab a face and uh, all of that stuff. So uh, this is in the little thing. Um, so when you're in edit mode, you can, if you come up here at the top left, you'll see you've got a drop down here that you can use as opposed to using the radial menu. And it's going to give you all the same options, top left up here. And then to, just to the right of that is going to let you pick if you want to be able to grab vertices, edges, or uh, faces. This also is one, two, and three, but not on the numpad. <laughs> um, these are the, the numbers up on your above the QWERTY. Give let you one, two, and three would choose vertices, line, or face. Uh, some other basic nav stuff. Okay, your numpad. This is super useful, super important. Um, if you hit one on the numpad, it takes you to your front orthographic view. And you'll know that because up at the top left here, it's going to show you. Uh, it's going to tell you that you're in that front ortho view. If you press three, you'll notice it changes over to right ortho view. Uh, let's see, five. Yeah, you don't want to do five yet. Seven <laughs> gives you your top down ortho view. Um, and uh, yeah, so you notice there was not a left ortho or a bottom ortho, and that is because if you press nine while you're in a view, it's going to flip it. So if you press seven and you're looking at the top and you want to be looking at the bottom, you press nine on the numpad and it flips it. And what you'll end up noticing is you're going to do this, and you go, oh, cool, and then you're going to grab it and you're actually going to move. Uh, it, it's going to happen. Don't sweat it. Just hit that nine again or, or hit the seven again, hit nine. And you're right back to where you want to be. So when you're in orthographic view, here are a couple more of the uh, shortcut keys. So if you hold shift. Wait, I, I need to make sure I'm in the same in the right view. So uh, I'm hitting you hit the numbers on not on the numpad, you said. On the numpad for changing views. On the numpad. All right, so I hit seven. Uh huh. Okay. And seven. at the top left, it should show you that you are at the top orthographic view. Okay. All right. Cool. That's all right. I'm there. Thanks. All right, and then press nine, and it'll flip you to the bottom. Cool. Nine. Nine just flips. So if you're looking at the right side and you want to look at the left side real fast, just press nine. Um, so we'll just do seven right now. Seven's gonna take us on the orthographic view. When you're looking at something like this on the orthographic, you may want to like zoom in and work on a part of it. And you know, you're gonna hit that middle mouse and you're gonna drag it and it's gonna flip. And what you the shortcut for this is hold shift, grab it with your middle mouse button, and now it's just going to move like you would holding spacebar in Photoshop. Okay. Could you repeat that? What are you holding when you hold shift or what are you pressing? A shift, middle mouse button to grab it, just like you would spin it around. Um, with the middle mouse. 
everything, all the movement stuff here is your middle mouse grabbing it. So shift is going to let you move it like this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Where's the rest of these? Uh, move that rotation. You. Uh, yeah. I, what is it? Uh, oh, and uh, click and control. Uh, shift. Alt. Oh yeah, yeah. Alt lets you uh, mess your timeline. Don't worry about that. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know uh, as far as that stuff goes. Uh, like I said, all this stuff is in that little document, um, and it'll make more sense once we start moving around. But if you don't, if you if you don't even know how to navigate around, it gets real frustrating, and it doesn't have to be. So now let's make something. So uh, anytime you make a new object, you want to make sure that you're in object mode. Uh, and I'll show you, before we get into this, I'll show you exactly why you want to do that. If you're in edit mode, it, you can still, uh, your shortcut for making something new is shift A. So you'll see here, it's gonna still let you make stuff if you hit shift A. So I can make another cube and now it's in here. The problem is, now I'm moving both of these things around. They're not separated. There's stuff you, you can separate them, but it, yeah, you can get into that later. Um, so let's go into object mode. And you'll notice, you'll, you'll know when you're in object mode, if you try and make something new, uh, shift A, it just lets you bring up your add mesh and you're going to have a lot more options if you're in object mode because you can make a lot more stuff. So if you don't see a place where you can drop a camera, don't make a new thing because you're in edit mode. <laughs> so, uh, okay, next favorite hotkey here, select an object, press X and delete it. Backspace does not do what you think it does. Don't forget backspace. X is your delete button. So let's delete that cube. Just highlight it with a left click, press X, and get rid of it. Then you're going to pick uh, Shift A, and we're going to add a plane. Ba -da -ba. Whenever you add an object, it's always going to be added where the 3D cursor is. So let's say we add that, and now we want to put something like on the corner over here, specifically in a like a specific place, you would hold shift and right click, and it's going to move the 3D cursor wherever you click. And that is where, if we were to make cube, it's going to be centered around where the cursor is. All right, so we got our plane. Uh, cursor to origin. Yeah. Uh, where all of your vertices meet is called your world origin. Uh, if you want to reset your 3D cursor, uh, Shift S brings up that radial menu, and you would go cursor to world origin. All right. Has this been too confusing? Is this too much already? Uh, I'm about 90% there. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm following. Good. Oh, good. Hey, yeah. 90% a lot better than where I was. Good job. Um, all right. So let's talk about now how I would practically do this um, and how it would be kind of useful for us for what we do. Um, so most of this stuff I do with a mouse. Uh, this part, I'm actually going to probably do with my uh, stylus. So um, we've got this plane here. I want this plane to be uh, a 10 meter by 10 meter plane. Now, you can just grab it and scale it, or you can come over to dimensions here. Press in if you're not seeing it. It'll bring this up. And this is going to give us a 10 meter by 10 meter plane. Scale gets a bit weird in here. Um,
recommend it when you start messing around with grease pencil because it does have numbers attached to the size of things, like your brush size, so you will notice it there. The whole reason that we're not doing this in the 2D animation thing is because we already have programs for doing 2D animation. Um, what we need uh, for our workflow um, is something that does more than that. So let's say this is kind of the scenario I was talking to you guys about earlier. I had that club scene I was building out because I know I'm going to have a bunch of shots in there. And I could try to remember the layout of it, or I can drop something in here real fast, build it, and move on. So Grease Pencil is a 3D object. And when I say that, I mean that if you hit Shift A and you make a grease pencil uh, and you make a blank, you will then be able to go into draw mode. We get there by uh, holding tab, hold tab, go up to draw mode. And this is, if you're not sure if you're, because you can't really see it here, if you look at your right, uh, all the way over here on the right. This is effectively the same thing as your layers in Photoshop, but not quite, but it's really close. So this is where all of your stuff is. So if you are got a complicated scene or if there's something you know is there you're not seeing, you can come over here and click this. And when you click it, you'll see it highlight red, and then you'll see whatever that object is on your, your work window will be red as well. Um, and the reason it's red right now is because we're actually in draw mode. You can't do anything with stuff that's not grease pencil in draw mode. But if you come out of that, you click it, you'll see how now it's orange. It means you can manipulate those things in object mode. So we're going to click on the grease pencil object again. We're going to tab into draw mode. Now you'll start seeing some fun stuff. Um, when we're done with this, uh, I'll hit you guys the link to Spitfire because he does such a good job explaining all of this. But basically, what you're going to want to do once you've got this here is you're going to come over to the right over here. And you're going to click on Viewport Display. So this little thing right here. So come down here. Uh, to where it says draw a grease pencil. So we're going to turn onion skinning on. We probably won't use it, but we're going to go ahead and turn it on. We're going to turn the canvas on. And when you do, you'll see this little grid thing pop up. This is going to let you know like where the plane you're drawing on is. So you definitely want this. Um, let's go ahead and make this about like that. Uh, fade and active, fade and active on the X. Yeah, we don't need any of that on. So now that you've got this here, let's talk about- uh, You what... lost me. I didn't get that menu when I clicked that. Uh -oh. oh, sorry. Um, if you come up to the top right. Do I need to make sure that I'm in a certain um, mode? I think you, you might need to be in grease pencil or in draw mode. Okay, so I hit tab, make sure I'm in draw mode. Okay, I ah. am. And then I make sure grease pencil is selected in that uh, there's like a word for this for these layers right it has like a special name they're just objects man these, objects. these are just objects okay. in your scene um, grease pencil is just another 3d object okay so that's it's a grease pencil selected in the scene collection or whatever it's called objects and then i click that drop down menu for show overlays or what's it called the... uh viewport overlays viewport overlays for me it's saying show overlays it, it's not saying viewport overlays um but anyway when i click it i don't see grease pencil show up oh um is this on so it should be blue yeah it's blue it's blue and you click the drop down yeah and oh. you don't okay it says viewport overlays but i don't see I don't see grease pencil options. Do you see those options, Pierce? Yeah, I got those. You got those, so it's just me? Okay. 
So now I want to see your screen. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. We'll let you take over. Okay. Window. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. You can see it, Andy? If my thing will load, yes. Yes, I can. Okay. So I click this, and then I don't see those options. You have... What is that? What is beside that? Uh, is... Up, up, at, up at your... Um, your top thing, you have an option I don't have. Right there. Go go up. What's that? It says draw a grease pencil. Onion okay, skin. so that, that's what we were looking for. Mine is just in that other menu for some reason. Oh. Okay. So uh, see where it says uh, grid, I think. Grid. Or canvas. It says canvas. Should be the top option there that you can click the box beside. I, uh, top option is onion skin. What's below it? Oh, canvas. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's really weird. I have no idea why you have that option separate from everything else. But yours uh, isn't here's yours isn't like mine, Pierce. Yours is where he said. Mm, yeah, mine is like is oh. like Andy's oh. essentially. Oh. Did you just recently download this? Because maybe I have an older version of the software. Yeah, oh. I downloaded it recently. Okay, so yeah. there's probably why. Yeah, I haven't... I'm working on an older version too. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I haven't touched this in years. This <laughs> is the first time I'm <laughs> so this has been on my on my desktop forever. Never touched it, so gotcha. that's probably oh. why. Oh I see. Okay. So your so your results may vary at home if depending exactly. on the version. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. Okay, no. I didn't so, know that, but that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. So, what do I need to be sitting here under this op these options? I just uh, click Canvas, click uh -huh. the little uh, checkbox, and if you look at your screen now, um, your your work menu where your 3D cursor is, you'll see a little grid pop up. Right. Yeah. That's what we're after. Okay. So you got it. All right. Cool. All right. I'll switch back over to you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I guess you got to reshare. Do I? Oh no, no, never mind. You're still up. Should we select it? How do I make it big again? Uh... <laughs> okay. Um. Well, that was a mystery I didn't know would exist. So cool. Um. All right. So if you look at your little grid here, and you middle mouse to move around, you'll notice that your grid stays perpendicular to your view. So the, the grid does not change based on your view right now. And what that means is if we go to draw something on it, uh, draw a grease pencil thing, it is going to draw it onto that grid. But if we move, we are no longer drawing on that grid. Uh, well, we're still drawing on the grid, but it's not on the same plane that the other one was because this is moving with us. And that can be a real pain. So up. If you're looking at this, if you go up to the top, you're going to see a couple of options up here called origin and view. Um, stroke placement, this is going to um, do some stuff. And view is going to also do some stuff. So let's start with, we're going to lock this view to front. So now when we move our camera around, it doesn't move. And if we go to draw on it, no matter what angle we're looking at it, think about it like you're drawing on a wall here. And it's just going to draw right on that wall, uh, regardless of what angle your view is now. Um, uh, let's see, stroke placement. Let's see. So there are a couple of other options here you can play with. Um, you can base the origin on the 3D cursor. Uh, surface is fun, and what that's going to do is it's going to grab the closest object and it's going to put you drawing on that object. 
you can see this. Um, this can be useful for stuff. So if you were wanting to like, um, bounce over to object mode real quick, we will make a cube. Uh, uh, and yeah, there we go. Um, oh, so now, if you go back to your grease pencil here, why is it purple? What did I do to make it? Oh, I went to vertex paint mode like a dumb dumb. Uh, select your grease pencil. And that's another thing. Okay. So if you were to select this cube and pull up your uh, tab radial, you're going to see vertex paint and not draw. So if you want to be able to draw, I'm not painting, I'm not painting vertexes. You got to click on your grease pencil object, and then it's going to give you the draw option. And now we're back into being able to draw stuff. So if we were to pick surface here, it literally is going to grab the nearest surface and it's going to put that offset from the surface. So if you come up here while you're on surface to this drop down, you can actually reduce the offset if you want it to be closer. So it actually lets you, I mean, I, I've had ideas about how to use this to do like some kind of interesting effects. Um, but yeah, so this can be useful. So if you were wanting to like get something that looks, you know, kind of hand drawn, then this is an option for doing that in a scene as opposed to like having shaders and stuff. Uh, if you were like, hey, I don't want to draw a building or, or I don't want to have to model a building, uh, then you can come in here and like do this kind of stuff. And all of a sudden you have a little storefront or whatever. So it, it can be really useful um, when you're doing fast, like board, board type stuff. Uh, okay, so let me, don't follow along with this because I am going to clear. Uh, well, unless you did follow along and then follow along. So we can grab the, the cube in object mode, press X and then delete it. And uh, okay, this is another fun thing. So let's say we're in draw mode here and you've got all this stuff and we don't really want it anymore. <clears throat> um, if you're on a Wacom, which I, I think most of us are, um, or Huey out even, you can flip around and you can actually use your eraser and just erase. Is that working for everybody? Mm -hmm. um, I I spawned in a cube, which you did very quickly, by the way. Maybe you, maybe when oh, I'm sorry. you need people to spawn things, you can make sure everyone. And yes, then, yes, yes. So I spawned in the cube, but then I was pressing tab to try and get back to draw mode, and it's not showing up. So I guess maybe I'm already in yeah. draw mode and I don't realize it. You are not. So once you spawn the cube, yeah. that cube was now your selected object. So over in the right, go and select grease pencil again, and then press tab. Uh, I still don't uh, see draw mode. I see vertex paint, weight paint. Okay, so uh, go go. make sure you're in object mode. Okay. And now come over to the right uh, in like your layers panel effectively, but this is like your object stuff, and click uh, left-click the G pencil, and it should come up as yellow here when you click it, does it? Yeah, it's yellow, and then it made all, all the, the lines yellow as well. Yeah, yeah, so now that object is selected, so now you can go into draw mode. Oh, okay. All right, thanks. Yeah. So basically, when you hit tab, this is these are all the options for things you can do to an object. Um, it, when you're dealing with like other objects, you can do vertex paint mode, which is like a cheating way of adding color without having to like do texture work. And it literally bases it off of the vertices. So if you've only got a cube, then you've only got like, what is that? Eight vertices that you can kind of select color. And then it's going to distribute that around. It, it, it's it's super useful when it's useful and super pointless when it's not. 
Um, but just know, if you don't see draw mode, you probably just need to make sure that you're in object mode and then select the grease pencil, hit tab, and then go up to draw. The cool thing about this is that once you're in the grease pencil object and you're drawing along and stuff, uh, let's say we, we were showing this stuff or we were trying something out and it kind of got away from us. And now we've got all this stuff and we tried to erase some things, but you know, we didn't really get everything. What you can do is just hit tab and go into edit mode. And what you're going to see is that all of these lines are points. Um, just like if you were in Illustrator or some other vector format, these are 3D objects according to Blender. And that, that's what's really cool about this. So you can do the same thing. If you want to clear all this, you just hit A. It's going to select all the points, even these little things over here you didn't see. So A selects all, and then you just press X. And um, when you're in edit mode and you press X, it's going to give you the option to do a bunch of different things. Sometimes you only want to delete certain things. But now, if you want to delete everything and you select everything, always do points. Nothing can exist without the points. So we click that, and they're all gone. It's all gone. <laughs> uh, all right. And everybody following? We good? Yeah. Sweet. All right, so we're going to press 7 on the numpad, and we're going to do a top-down view. This is where it's going to get fun uh, until something weird happens and we have to figure out why not. So uh, in this top-down view, with your grease pencil object here, what you're going to do is go into draw mode. Ba -bum -bum. Everybody in draw mode now? Yep. And you're going to come up to here. And we are going to do 3D cursor. And we are going to set this to cursor. Um, for the sake of what we're doing here. Oh, yep, I moved. Uh, OK, so now this is, let's imagine we've got a little scene that we want to set up. This is really, really fun. Um, I'm sure we've all had to do this at some point. So let's say we've got a little environment that we need to make within, within this. Uh, all right. So let's say we want like a little little industrial type complex deal here. So let's say we've got like a little building there, a building here. Uh, ooh, let's have a water tower type deal here. And then maybe another little thing there. Looks pretty simple. Ooh, and a car. Let's say a car has pulled up here. Oh, God, what cars look like? Something like that? Yeah, sure. All right, so we now have a little scene. And... Um, Let's say we've read the notes, we've read the uh, the script or whatever, and we know that we've got four guys who are going to get out of this car. So now we're going to get into some not super complicated stuff, but just a little bit. Uh, and it might get a little confusing because I said that this thing at the top right is your layers, but it's actually your objects. And that's true. Grease pencil as an object has its own layers. So once you're in grease pencil, this is going to be more like Photoshop. And if you see all these little icons over on the right, uh, let me just click on these. So over here on the right, you'll see this little green squiggly thing here. Mm -hmm. This is your grease pencil layers. Has everybody got that up? Yeah. Cool. So um, you start off with a single layer. Think of this just like Photoshop. Um, you can, like if, we, if this was our lines layer, then you would add another layer, grab that layer. Over here, you can't just drag things like you can in Photoshop. You have to highlight it. You have to hit the little down arrow button. It's gonna move that layer underneath, which is awesome because 
that would essentially be our color layer if the top layer is our line layer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see now, where's our property? Oh, it's down here. So right underneath that is your materials tab. So we're going to click the materials tab. It's a little ball looking thing here. So what uh, in in Blender, materials are what the light interacts with, what your light source interacts with. So right now, we can see all of this stuff that we've got. Um, up here in the top right, these are your different shaders. This is different ways that Blender is showing you what you've got. Um, you've got, all right, don't, don't follow me on this. Um, just let me show you this real quick. Um, bounce to object mode. What we're going to do is we're going to make, uh, ooh, let's, let's make the monkey. So uh, we're going to make, uh, make the monkey. So this is, again, you don't have to follow along. I just want you to see this. So right now we're looking at a relatively complicated shape compared to a square or a cube. It's got all these surfaces and these vertices. Right now we're looking at it in solid mode. To the left of that is wireframe mode. And what this does, it lets you see through it and it would effectively let you like grab a point if you go into edit mode. If you can grab a point that's on the other side of what you're, you're messing with. It can be useful. Um, there will be times when you'll want to do that, but we're, we're not there. So this is wireframe mode. This is solid mode. This is, uh, what's this one called? This is uh, your materials display. So if we were to click, uh, I can't remember the monkey's name. If we click the monkey and come over here to materials, Suzanne, yeah, it's Suzanne. And we were to add a material. So you have to add a material to give the thing a color. And then base color over here. And we'll just change that. And you will see that here. If we click back over into solid mode, you will not see the color. And this is so Blender doesn't crash and make your computer blow up. So you can know that this thing is red and you've given it that color. But to take some of the processing power off, we bounce back over into this mode. It, it's literally just to keep your computer from melting. And if you want to see what it, this is, okay, so this is with color, and then your final mode is render mode. And this starts factoring in your light source. So you can see uh, Suzanne's casting a shadow, different places. If you were to grab the light, you will be able to dynamically, in real time, see the effects the lighting is having here. Uh, this is not complicated scene, so you can do this without too much worry. Um, that is just a, a rundown of these different viewport modes. And the reason I wanted to show you that, we'll just delete that and get rid of it, is once we come back here, just understand that your materials tab, even in Grease Pencil, is doing the exact same thing. It's giving color to geometry. So um, if you were to say, okay, I want a black color, and just lines. If you look down here, we have stroke selected. And with this black, all this is going to do when you're in, uh, oh shit, uh, to grab grease pencil, go into draw mode. So with this, we're just getting a black line, right? If you were to click fill, then just like in Illustrator, if you messed with it, it's going to give you a black line. Um, but it also should be giving you a fill. No, screw it. We're going to make a new one. So if you were to make, if you want to make a new material, actually, let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and make a new material. You do that in the materials tab by pressing the little plus at the top right over here. Now you would think, oh, cool, the material is made. It's not. You then have to click new material. Now you have a new material. Now it looks, it's, it's kind of set up the same, but now, if we click fill on, and let's say we want to give this 
just so you can see it. Let's make the screen. So now, this damn thing's making a liar out of me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm stupid. I just explained why you wouldn't be able to see color. And uh, I'm being an idiot. So what's happened is it's, it's made the color, uh, but it's like right on the plane. So... Uh, you know what? We'll get to that in a second. Get to that in a second. Damn it. So uh, once you've made this new material, unclick fill. And on your stroke, I want you to change the base color to green. And it changed both. Oh, okay. So now, all right, let's make it a little bit darker so you can see it. Okay, so now we've got this little green here. So what I want you to do is to think about, uh, so let's say in our script, we've got four bad guys coming out of our car and we've got three heroes set up waiting to ambush them. So let's say you've got one hero that's waiting on the water tower. You've got one hero waiting on this building and then another one waiting on this building. And let's say that um, we're gonna come over here Click the little plus thing again to make a new material. And we're just gonna make this one red. So that's plus up here. Then you have to hit new material and then change your base color. And now you can draw in red. Pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. So now let's say we're gonna have a guy, we're gonna have four people getting out of the vehicle. And let's say we know that they're going to be moving towards the center here. So we're just going to draw a line here, line here, line here, and a line here. And these are going to be the paths of motion that we're going to expect them to take. If you want to go back to drawing green, just come up to the material here and just click on it. And so at some point, our heroes are going to jump down to confront them. But on bum so uh yeah so now we know what all is going to happen and now we just have to make people do the things right uh, yeah anybody got any questions up to this point no sweet cool so let's go ahead and show you how we're going to do stupid, easy, quick mock-ups of this space. You gotta have this ground plane because when you start drawing and clicking on stuff, you wanna you want the ground plane here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop back over to object mode. And we're going to do shift A. Now what I want you to do is go instead of mesh, we're gonna go to curve. You're going to go down to where it says path. What are we doing? No, I'm stupid. Ignore me. Okay, no. We're going to go to mesh. We're going to do plane. We're going to make a new plane again. The reason we're making a new plane instead of making a cube is because if we were to make a cube here and start moving it around, you're going to have to swap from like the top down view to like a side view to make sure you're grabbing everything and moving it right. But instead, what we're gonna do is once you've got your plane made, you're gonna press G and that's gonna let you move it. And because we're in the orthographic view, you don't have to worry about moving up or down, it, um, like vertically or, yeah, you don't have to worry about moving vertically. You're only moving on a horizontal plane because you're in the orthographic top-down view. So we're gonna, basically we're gonna take this thing, now that it's here, and you see, we're doing this in object mode, and it's moving the um, origin with it, a little orange line. Now that we're here, we're going to hit S. We're going to scale it down to where it fits about in this space. Hey, Ben, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Sorry I'm late. 
Uh, it's all good. Uh, Zach has been kind enough to record it, so um, it, it will exist for later. Great. I'll catch it later. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but feel free to hang out and yeah, do the thing, ask questions. All right. So um, now that we, we've got this thing put here, we're going to swap over to edit mode. And we're going to, you can either come up here aside where it says edit mode and select uh, line, or you can press two in the number row that's not the number pad. Uh, and then you're just gonna select this. Everybody get that one grabbed? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and now we're gonna use the extrude tool and X or not, yeah, the extrude command, I guess. And when we, so if we were to just hit G and grab this, we're going to move the whole thing around. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude a new line based off of that one. And we're going to press X to make sure it's moving exactly along the X axis. With me? So what are you pressing? Are you pressing G and X? Oh, uh, so after, okay, so once you've got it selected, press yeah. E to extrude it, and oh. you'll know you've done that because it's automatically going to grab it, and you're going to be moving a new line that's connected to the other one. Got it. And then to make sure that you're moving perfectly horizontal to it, uh, perpendicular to it, mm -hmm. uh, my brain hit X, and it's going to automatically line it up on that axis. And you'll know it's doing that because you'll see the little red line. See the line? Yep. OK, cool. All right, and then we're going to repeat that same process for this one. And all we're doing is hit E to extrude. You'll have it grabbed, and it'll move whatever weird direction. Then for this one, we're going to press Y, and we're just going to make it move along the y-axis and then uh right click when you have it or i'm sorry left click when you have it where you want so when i try to select that it's selecting the whole new line that was created like the long line not just the cube line long line? you know the original square that was there and then you pulled the the face out to make it longer uh-huh it, it it moved the whole thing it reshaped it but you said you made a new a different line like your original line is still there from your original square but my but my line got moved um okay see you then uh show me man i love technology okay Okay, you did not extrude your first line. Right. Okay, so hit Control Z until you're back to just having your square there. There you go. Okay, so now you've got that one highlighted. Now press E, and you'll see that it has now extruded a new line. Oh, okay, I missed the E part. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy to to miss those things, but yeah, that that's it. And then just do the same thing with the uh, other line. Hit E, and then Y. Ba -da -bum. Oh, okay. Thanks. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now we're going to do the nah. We're going to do the same thing for this building. We're just going to hit, uh, we're going to go back to object. You know what? No. Okay. Okay. So we're going to not go back to object mode because I want to be able to manipulate all of these in the same way at the same time. Uh, 
if we wanted to be able to adjust them individually, we would make a new one in object mode. But because we're kind of going for the speed run on this, we're going to make a new plane without swapping to object mode while we're still in edit mode. Once you've done that, press G and bring it over here to this building and line it up. Uh, you may get, you may be able to get away with just uh, scaling this properly. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so for that, you just hit S, and uh, if you only want it to go one way or the other, you can either press X to uh, scale it along the X axis or Y to scale it on the Y axis. We're just going to do X, make it just a little bit wider. But uh, then we are going to hit Shift A again, and this time we're going to make a circle, and that's for the water tower. And uh, mine's about the right size, but again, you can just when you move it, you can just put it kind of where you want it, and then you can scale it. Uh, yeah. And we're going to make another plane. Oops. Make another plane, press G, and we're going to make this one now. Uh... Yeah, it's fine. Um, Shift A to make another plane. G to drag it over, and we're just going to fit it to this size now. Scale that on the y-axis to make a long boy. And uh, make us another one. Shift A. Make this. G to grab it. S to scale it. And there we go. Uh, yeah, we'll make the car separate. But now, what you have, uh, if we select we go back to object mode, what you're going to notice is that you can see all these outlines now. Uh, everybody can see that in object mode, right? Um, yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Yes. We now bounce back over into edit mode and hit A. And it's going to select everything. The, is all your stuff selected? Mm -hmm. All right, now check this out. Hit three. Uh, three is num lock three. Or we yeah, should yeah, just yeah. assume keyboard three, unless you say numpad three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, assume numpad when I say numbers, um, and I won't mention the other ones. Okay. The the only other numpad. Thing, the only other numbers that I would mention are the ones for either selecting vertices, line, or face for select mode. So if I say a, a number, just assume it's on the dump pad. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go to this right orthographic view. Everything is still highlighted, and we're going to hit E again. And we're going to move up. Cool. So let's say we're going to move it up. This is a little bit of trial and error, if I'm being honest, um, for scale. But let's say we're going to move it up about a box and a half. Do you guys see, when I say box, uh, like, so this would be like one box, like up the scale behind the thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll go about, about a box and a half. Make sense? Yep. We might adjust that, we might not. So now, with your middle mouse, you can kind of move the thing around and you can see that we have effectively built a little park, like a little uh, little space here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hit E again. And this time we're going to press Z to make sure it's uh, moving in the Z axis. And now here's the fun part. Hit S to scale it, 
Now, what you're going to notice is it's all going to scale to the middle because that is where the origin of all of this stuff is. So, what we're going to do, we're going to come up here to the pivot point. No. You know what? It's just. Uh, I gotta remember exactly how to do this. So you should just be able to press. See? Nope. Yeah. Did this earlier. Now I can't remember what, what I did. Individual origins. Yeah, okay. So um, with all this stuff still selected, after you've extruded it up, you're gonna press the period button. It's gonna bring up this little radial. And you're gonna select individual origin. When you do that, it's going to, and then you hit scale, it's actually going to scale it to itself. Mm. You guys getting that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's decent. And uh, now, so if you look here, most of these are closed, but we have this big open cylinder, right? When you've got something like that, that maybe you want to fill, what you do is you press F. F adds a face. So if you have a selected bunch of points that you could put a face in, just hit F and it's going to fill it with a face. Ta-da! Now, this is really, really useful. Do not follow what I'm about to do because I'm just going to show you this. So let's say that you actually wanted to do, you wanted to connect this to this. So you would select, if you wanted to close this space up manually, effectively, you would select uh, an edge, select another edge and hit F. And it's going to create a face between those two edges you have selected. Now, if this is an enclosed space, instead of having to do that individually for each one, what you can do is highlight an edge here, knowing that you've got three edges and you just need to connect that one. Hit F again and it will auto fill this stuff in, saving you lots of time. That's just pressing F after you establish that, that middle point. And the point of doing that, you might ask, would be, why the hell would I do that? And it would be because if you wanted to say, you know, individually manipulate this stuff to get some more like interesting geometry, you can just select like two faces at once, hit G, and all of a sudden you can start creating like more interesting shapes effectively. And it doesn't take a lot of time to do. Uh, it, it's kind of the difference in like, I don't know, a, a goofy looking water tower and then maybe something more fantasy based. So just an FYI there. Uh, because eventually, wow. if, you, if you mess around with it enough, you'll want to do that. <laughs> you'll hit a point. So let's say that we tried that and it didn't work. And we still got this big empty space here. You could select each one of these so that you could hit F and just make that one big thing. But if you want to select all of the line here, hold Alt and click what you want, and it's going to select everything connected to it. So that's an Alt, left click. Same goes if we wanted to select this edge here all the way around the tower, you just click Alt, Alt click. If you wanted to select this line and this line, and if they were connected, all of them all the way around, same thing, Alt, click. So, so now we've got our little industrial park. Cute, right? Uh, um, so now we're going to hit seven. 
now now follow back along <laughs> uh, we're gonna hit seven going back into our orthographic view so we can see our uh play by play here our little little map and we are going to in object mode because we want this to be a separate object now we're going to make a cube so shift s i know sorry shift a mesh cube we're going to move our cube over to where the car is and scale it did i make a cube i made a cube it's fine it's fine r is rotate just like s is scale r is rotate and um, when you're dealing with 3d objects Doing 3D objects, and you hit R, it can be random. But if you want it to, let's say, spin around the Z axis, just like if you're moving it and you want it to move along an axis, if you're scaling it, you can scale it along an axis. And when you're rotating, you can rotate along an axis. It's the exact same thing. You just hit which axis you want it to rotate around, and it will do it. We. Uh, so apparently, when I did this, I made this stupid cube in midair. And I want this stupid cube to be on top of my car on the same plane that the rest of my stuff is. So to get it there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press shift and right click in the middle of the car. Should put your 3D cursor right there in the middle. Then we're gonna press shift S, selection to cursor, and it's gonna move it there. Except it's clipping. That's okay. Just press G, and we're going to move it along the Z axis until it's pretty much where we want it. Then we're going to press 7 again. Take us back to our ortho view. Then we're going to press R, and we're just going to rotate this stupid thing around until it's about the shape of the car. We're going to press S to scale it. And uh, so What's happening here is we are not really getting a good scale across the lines, across the axes, because this thing is not straight up a square anymore, um, according to the axis that this stuff has. So you can change which axis you transform around. Right now, we're on the global axis. You come up to the top, click this. Global means that everything is moving based off of the world X, Y, Z axis. If you change this to local, then it's going to move this stuff and scale it across its X, Y, Z axis based off of when it was made. So because it, you know, we made the cube and it plopped the cube down, oriented to the world origin, well, it remembers that. So we can set this to local up here. And now when we scale it, it's going, now when we scale it, we can now do our typical X, Y, Z scaling to its own alignment. Does that make sense? Mm, kind of, because I'm still getting sort of like that sort of overall, um, do you have to so say when you're scaling you have to press then you have to press z while you're scaling as well or at y to get it to do that as well yeah so if you hit scale um it's gonna scale perfectly Got like it. it's just going to scale perfectly unless you hit x at which point you see the little line pop up when i press x that goes that yeah press exit that's gonna let you know which access or which, which axis you're moving along ah uh, got you yeah and this is its own xyz axis not the world xyz axis got it. it it can be a little weird um so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back up here and uh we're gonna change this back to global so we don't forget and now we've got our little fake car here we can do a little bit of work to this thing by going into edit mode um We've all had to draw a bunch of cars. So you can come up here and select face uh, over by your edit mode up here at the top left. Select face. 
and we're gonna grab this whole top thing. We're gonna press G to move it. And we're just gonna move it down um, so that we can make this thing a bit more car shaped. And you know what? We're actually gonna come back up here and change this back to local so that when we scale it, we can just scale this thing down so that we get that kind of basic car shape. I say basic, like this super stupid basic. Uh, so what we have here is a problem. What I would really like to be able to do is have more things I could move on this object to make it a little bit more car shaped. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys one of the most powerful things in Blender, and that is called the edge loop. So if you press Control R in edit mode, you are going to see this little yellow box pop up if you move your mouse around. Does everybody, let me know when you all have that pop up here. Got it. You see it, Zach? Con what R? <laughs> Control R. Control R when I have it selected. In edit mode. In edit mode. Okay, I'm in edit mode. Yeah, you don't have to have anything selected in edit mode. Um, you just have to be have your mouse kind of hovering over what you want to edge cut or edge loop and press Control R. And move your mouse around a little bit after you do that, and you'll see it pop up. Mm. Not seeing it? No. But it's okay. You can continue. I'll, I'll just watch the video back later, I guess. I mean, you can just show me. Um. Okay. Well, first of all, you lost me on the, the, the making the car that shape thing, so I have to go back and do that. Okay, but, pop, pop up, pop it up. All right. Because I was having issues earlier that I didn't want to take time to to resolve, which was um, with the with the pencil when I tried to draw on the plane, it was drawing in a different orientation than the flatness of the plane. So the shapes were actually like on the y axis instead of the plane mm -hmm. x axis. So it was. It was bizarre but anyway yeah so here we are so all right so what now no that's fine it's yours all right uh so you are in are right, you're in edit mode um you've got is that thing Do you have a plane selected? Select your cube. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're you've got that bottom plane selected right now. So go to object mode. That's why you weren't seeing anything. So yeah, press tab. Go to object mode. Select your little car cube. Now go into edit mode. Yeah. And now you can just grab whatever you want in there, like edge-wise, I think. Okay, so right now you have face select, which is fine. So you can just click on uh, a face, and it'll, it'll select it, and you can manipulate that. Uh, so if you press Control-R now that you're there, you will now see a little yellow loop pop up. Yeah. And what it's doing as you move it is it's giving you the option of which way you want to cut this thing. Okay. So All right. which one do I pick? Uh, okay. So, yeah, pick the one you just had. Pick that. Uh, not that one. The eh, doesn't really matter. Um, you can always control Z and go back and read. Yeah, you just cut that. Uh, see, now you've got it. Uh, hit control Z like twice. There you go. Now cut that thing in half. 
horizontally. Yeah, like that. And uh, yeah, so here's the cool thing. All right. So let's bounce back over to mine. You, you got it now. Okay. How to, and then you're going to show me again how to like get this to like collapse in? Or oh, it's like... um, so probably the easiest way to do it is uh, you're on the edge select. So um, select this, select the top back edge, I guess. That would be the rear of your car. Uh, yeah, grab, grab it from the top. Yeah. Um, and you can just G and move that thing back. So here's the fun thing. When you grab G, it's going to move all the way around. If you press G twice, it's going to move it within the object parameter. Uh, I don't know how else to explain that. You see what it's doing now that you've pressed G twice, right? Yeah. Like you can't you can't move outside of it. You can only kind of move within that that plane that it's on. Right. Right. So this is another way that you can move things and keep everything symmetrical and lined up. So you can do the same thing with the back. Um, that back line, pull it in. Yeah. And then you can just grab that. Yeah, you can do three, grab the plane, drop it down to the top of your car a little bit. Yeah. So um, okay. on mine, Thanks. because uh, I did not cut it properly, what I'm going to do is I am going to, while in edit mode, I'm going to alt this edge. Is it below the thing? It is below the thing. So it's all selected. You let me select the whole, you know what? Screw you. I'll select the whole damn thing as a so we're gonna bring this thing up just enough where I can see it. We're going to scale this thing down a little bit. Uh man, this looked way better earlier. Oh no. Uh okay. So this is not super, super important. Like you can mess around with this kind of stuff and get get everything exactly the way you want it to make your uh, make your car look like a car I'm not doing a great job of this right now but anyway so let's say okay that's our car we've got our little facility here we know where we want our people to be so shift right click and drop your uh, 3D cursor on top of this thing here. And once you've done that, go to object mode. We're going to press control A. And we're going to make a new greased pencil object. So um, that's weird. I'm done. Okay, so then we're going to go into draw mode, and we are going to set this thing to 3D cursor and view. See, here's the thing. If you set this thing to view and you're not in ortho view, then it's going to draw it all wonky. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and say do for what we're going to do right now, set this to front. This way you know you're drawing on it. Set it to front and then press 1 on the numpad to go into this orthographic view. Uh, let me know when you guys get there or if you have any questions about how to get to this. Working on it right now. Yeah, no problem. So we're supposed to go into object mode 
and then from there press what? Control A to add a grease pencil or uh, sh Shift A. Shift A to add grease pencil, a blank <laughs> grease pencil. Correct. Yep. Okay, I did that. So now I see the grid, and as I'm rotating, it's like staying flat against flat to me. Right. So if you now um, go up to these options up here, mm -hmm. so you're going to select 3D cursor and then front as your drawing plane. Um, which, but I should be in draw mode for that? Yeah, draw mode. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Cursor and you said front plane. Got you. And uh, then, once you've got it set up like that, you're going to press 1 on your numpad to go into front orthographic view. So we've got the grease pencil set to where we're drawing on the plane set to front, and we're in front orthographic view. Okay. So this is the most accurate drawing we're going to get here. And all you're going to do is you're just going to draw a little person really does not matter how good the person is right now um, we're just gonna we're just gonna draw a person but -dum bum let me know when you've got your little person draw okay i got mine and i have mine sweet now over to the right in this uh, little mid strip panel, click the little squiggly line. It's going to take us to layers. Everybody find it. I know, I know it's it's a pain in the ass finding these little things. Yeah, found it. All right. So now, right beside the layer. We're going to press the plus button to add a new layer. And then we are going to, while that zero, zero, 001 layer is selected, uh, press the little down arrow to move it down. That down arrow is like below the plus and minus to add them. Got it? Got it. Wunderbar. Yep. So right below the little green squiggly is like a little beach ball of death. That's our materials tab. We're going to click on the beach ball. Just like we added a layer, we are now going to add a new material. So we're going to click the little plus button at the top right. And again, this always pisses me off because I should just be able to add new. The reason you can't, the, the reason it does this is because right beside add new, there's another little beach ball. That beach ball contains like other materials that you can drop in here if you've made other materials does yours have any of this i've got it does yours say um it has some of them but not others yeah it, it's like that don't don't sweat it don't sweat it that's really more useful when you start getting into like making complex scenes. Basically what it lets you do is if you've got a character, you can say that like, let's say your character shirt is red. You can say character one red shirt for your material. And if later on you decide that you actually want that to be blue, if you use that material for every time you make the shirt color, you can just change that material one time and it changes it across all of them. So now that we're here, we, we've got this, we're going to click new. You guys get this little drop down. Mm -hmm. All right. So instead of, we're going to click stroke off, we're going to click fill. And we are going to make this green. Now, Fill works very similar to how, if you've used Illustrator, you know how you can, when you're making something, you can select fill and stroke. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the same thing. Like you can select fill and stroke, or you can turn off stroke and just have fill. So we're just going to use fill right now. 
Uh, and we're going to make sure we're on our second layer here, which we should be. So now all you got to do is just essentially make an outline. And it's going to auto fill that in. And if for some reason, like let's say, let's say you just do the arm, don't sweat it because you can just do the other arm and then you can do the body and then you can do the head. It doesn't have to be one continuous line. It's, it's fine. Cool. Sweet. Okay, so now we have our first grease pencil guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Grease pencil guy. Grease pencil guy. All right. So this is where uh, I've been running my mouth a bit long here, but this is a lot. So let's just dumb this down just a little bit and say that we're going to have our grease pencil guy here. Um, go back to object mode, make sure he's highlighted, and then you're going to press shift D. That is going to duplicate your little guy. Okay. Now move him somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, because what we're going to do is we are going to shift right click on where one of our little guys would be one of our bad guys and this guy should still be highlighted so then we're going to press shift s selection cursor and it's just going to toss him down there it's going to move him to the cursor okay Could you do that one more time? How you were able to get the the cursor to do that is yeah, sort of yeah. like uh, so. If you hold Shift and press right click, ah, anyway, there you go. Yeah, it's going to move that cursor. Got it. And then all you got to do is press Shift D. Uh, if you if you need to duplicate the guy, Shift D duplicates. Yeah. And then while he's highlighted, after you've duplicated him, Shift S is going to bring up the little radial menu for snap. And then you're going to do selection to cursor. Oh, I see. So, yeah, my scale is way off on all this. <laughs> um, and that's easy to fix. I mean, literally, you just grab one of these guys, S. We can scale them down to like an appropriate size. Already, this is super helpful in like the perspective and the geometry of a scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, just wait. I'm about to blow your fucking minds, guys. Okay. Good. So now. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff we can do, but let's for now say that we're just going to use this to get some good angle capture here. So in object mode, well, actually, we don't even have to go into object mode. Well, yeah, yeah, sorry. Go into object mode and then click your camera. If you don't see it on your screen, you can always just click it uh, over in the top right and it'll select. Got it. Got that camera, Zach? Yeah, I got it. Sweet. Now, numpad zero puts you into your camera view. Nice. Now, check this shit out. You guys are going to have to set this, but this is fine. So, go up to view. Click view. Go down to navigation and come down to where it says walk navigation. 
Uh, does yours have a hotkey beside it? Should it be just something in gray? Let's see. I don't. No, it does not. Okay, that's not a problem. While you're hovering over it, right click and change shortcut. Mm -hmm. And I have mine at Shift F. All right. Shift F. Mm -hmm. Shift F. Got it. Cool. So um, just move off of that. You'll know that your camera is selected because you will see the little orange box around the camera. So do you still see that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, have you guys both played uh, any first-person shooter or PC games? Yep. No, I do not. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, now hit Shift F. Shift F. Now you are in first-person shooter mode with WSD. Uh, a is your A and D are your strafes. Cool. W and S moves you back. E moves you up. Q moves you down, and your mouse acts like a mouse. You are now in first-person mode. This is sick. Wow. And um, when you get to camera, wherever you want it, make sure you left click. If you get somewhere weird and you don't like it, right click and it will reset it just like it, it stops anything else when you right click after you're doing it. Wow. Wait, what's that about the right clicking? Oh, um, so if you get like, like, look at my screen. If you like get stuck somewhere weird and you're like, ah, shit, I don't, I don't know how to get out of this and mm -hmm. you're in this camera, just right click and it cancels you moving the camera. Oh, I see. Okay. And and if you happen to be in, let's say, edit mode, and you accidentally grab something, and you're moving it, and you're like, ah, I don't want it to be here, right-click cancels the action as well. Oh, I see. Okay. And this also works with the arrow keys, at least for me. I'm getting the same effect as, like, the W, A, S, and D. I'm getting the same effect with the arrow keys. So oh, okay. that's super helpful as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, that does work. The only the only thing is with the arrow keys, you don't have the Q and E right there. Mm, true, true, true. And that's that's super helpful. So um, this oh, yeah, no. that's beautiful. Yeah. Now um, check this out. So another really really powerful thing here. If you take your mouse and you go over to your edge, where it's going to let you move your window around like this. Mm -hmm and you right click instead of left click to grab it's going to give you the option to split your area so we're going to do a vertical split and you're just going to drag this over you now have two views in one view you have your camera this is really useful because you can take and you can put your camera wherever you think you want your camera mm -hmm. let's say you want your camera like this right but if you start, if you grab your guy now, like this little guy, and you hit G and start moving him, he's going to be moving all over the place, like up, down, all over, right? Mm -hmm. You can hit seven again in this window, and you're back in your orthographic view. You can grab this guy or whatever, and when you move them, they stay on that plane. Oh. Uh... Uh... <laughs> now this is making sense all right yeah and the same thing goes for let's say um you know let's say you're you want something to move in whatever plane you can set your ortho view to that and move it you know however you want to move it uh that that's the great thing about having multiple views here you can even have you can change and these are two separate windows like i could literally like let's say um I want to do something with the car here. So what I can do is I can even go into like sculpt mode if I wanted to, and I can start sculpting the stupid car. Um, it's kind of pointless right now, but it, it, it's, it, it can be really useful. Draw, draw I get it. Draw on it though. Make it look, draw car stuff on it. <laughs> draw car stuff. Yes. Draw car stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, 
I've been put on the spot. I've been put on the spot. Yeah. And that's fine because I'm going to do it. Circus. I'm going to knock that to like super low. I should not use my mouse. It's an ugly car. It's an ugly car. I've drawn so many ugly cars. Yeah. But yeah, so um, this is kind of the basics, man. Like, once you've got that kind of stuff, it, it really comes down to figuring out now, what do you want to do? Question. When you're, yeah. when you're using the camera and you're walking the camera around like first person shooter, uh -huh. um, is there a way to quickly be able to change lenses? Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's a shit. Uh, oh, okay. 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 Oh, um, so just so you know, sometimes you're going to want to do, you're going to want to split your screen to get a certain thing done. And once that thing is done, you're going to want your full screen back one or the other mm. to get your screen back, go back to where you can move them, mm. right click. And now it's going to give you the option to join areas. And whichever direction you tell it to go, it's going to boot that other one out. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, your question was about the camera. So what you can do is once you have your, again, object mode, select your camera, press in, and it's going to bring up this toolbar over here. Uh, view. Um, uh, wait, that's not how we do it. How was it we did that? Focal view. Yeah, this isn't doing it. Um, hold on a second. Cool. That day, yeah. Moving that, the moving that did not do it. Uh, there's another way I have to do this. Um, is it here? Oh, I found it. Where'd you find it? Um, in the same area where, like, when I have the camera selected, underneath all those layers are up, up there. I feel like I heard that there's a term for that area, but underneath it, in that dialog box underneath it, like, where it's it has lens, depth of field, camera, safe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that I'm one. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that'll do it. Boop, boop, boop. Nice. Yeah. Oh wow. Very nice. Yeah. So here's another really cool thing. Um, now that you've got this, so let's just talk real quick about how to move stuff around. The so let's the whole reason that I made this little like football player map is because if I want to just move this thing on this path, we go go back to our orthographic view, press seven to get our top down view. We're gonna press shift A in object mode. And what we're gonna do is we are going to get a path. And this path is just going to be a straight line until we tab into edit mode. Share an orthographic. So in edit mode, what you're going to notice is that there are a bunch of points here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this point and we're going to put it, let's say, at the end of where we want our guy to go. We're going to grab this point press B, and we're going to move it to the starting point of where a person is. And we're just going to take these points, and you'll notice as you move these points, you see that, that black curved line that's kind of beside it? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is the path that you are creating by moving these points. And the reason that matters is because once you've got this curved path kind of along the line that you wanted it to go, let me know when you guys get there. Um, I personally, I missed what you clicked the first time to get into this. You said path, but. Oh, oh, uh, shift S. Um, or, sorry, I'm sorry. Shift A to make something new. Mm-hmm. Let me go back to object mode. Shift A and go down to curve. Curve, okay. And like five down, I think, is path. Okay. And it's going to give you a straight line. And then you're going to tab into edit mode and you'll see all the points you can move around. Uh, it's going to give me a straight line or I have to draw a straight line? No, no, it's going to give you just a straight line. Okay. And then I tab in edit mode. Mm-hmm. Oh, and now I see. you'll be able to see the points. Okay. Yeah. And just take one end and uh, slap it at the end point of where you want your path to be. And then take the other point, you know, at the other end of the line, make it where you want the, the path to start. And then just adjust the little points to get you a little curve path around the car. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Thanks. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you have that, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into object mode. We're going to grab our little bad guy here. And... So you can try and click this little path. Uh, you can hold uh, you can hold shift and click this path, and that's going to let you select both things at once. But you want to make sure that the first thing you select is your guy. And because this path is kind of a pain in the ass to grab, I am going to come over here to our objects, and I am going to find a little nerve thing, nerve path. That's what this thing is. So if you see the nerve path over here, you're going to press control and right click, and it's going to select the nerve path as well. The reason that you want to grab your little guy first and then select the nerve path as well is because we are going to parent our little guy to this path. So little guy first because you're going to parent him to the path and then select the path. So let me know when you guys have grabbed the little guy and then grab the path and you'll see that they're both highlighted. Got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, control P for parent, set parent to object. Cool. All right. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to over in your little menu here. Now, what, what you'll notice is that the, the grease pencil is now in a little group with the nerve path. Uh, because it's now parented to it. So select the nerve path. Uh, just click on it and you'll see it's highlighted, you know, and then come down here to where it's where your grease pencil layers would be, but now it is nerve path. It's uh, object data properties, but it, this is going to be like specific to that object. So if it's grease pencil, it's going to be like layers. If it's nerve path, it's going to be this stuff. Once you're here, you will see one of these little drop downs says path animation, and it has a little check mark beside it. Click that drop down. And where it says evaluation time, what you're going to do is you're going to left click in there and you can just drag it. And this little bastard is not doing what he's supposed to do. Is yours? Is yours acting weird? Is he following the path? Um, how do you how do you test if he is or isn't? Okay. So select your nerve path. Yeah. Come down here. 
above the little beach ball of death and the little green Got that. over here there's a little path animation mm -hmm. drop down and then evaluation time and if you just right click in there and drag you'll be able to change that number now this little bastard should be moving along the path He's kind of moving along the path, but he's really offset from it on mine. Hmm. Is he on yours? Hmm. He is not moving yet. Let's see something. Let me... Okay. Does it matter which one is above? Like, say, for example, say you have the nerves path below the grease pencil uh, object in terms of that right panel. Does it matter that the grease pen pencil is selected first, or should you be selecting the nerves path first and then the grease pencil? So you have to select the grease pencil and then the nerves path. Got it. Okay, because okay. you're parenting two. So whatever you select first, parents to the other thing okay got it got it. yeah the same thing happened to me because it it merged them in a different way than what you had andy i, got you. I yeah. think it had to do with the order in which they were selected yeah okay that's what i was thinking too just now that's okay we're gonna have to troubleshoot this because I'm, I'm gonna bet yours does the same thing mine does but i know i know a way to fix it yeah i'm not getting the sucker to move for some reason uh okay so select your select just select the guy in uh, object mode and we're going to hit yep. alt p alt p and it's going to bring up clear parent so go ahead and do that and that's going to reset us okay all right so let's try it this way select your little guy now come over to your objects panel yep control left click on nerves path control left click and it should just be those two things select just like selecting two layers in photoshop yeah just make got sure it. the grease pencil was first and then you, you got that zach um yeah yeah <laughs> That was a tentative, yeah. Yeah, yeah really no, yeah. no, no. I, I got, yeah, I, uh, I, I removed the parent, and now I, I have him clicked. Yeah, and then, and then, what do I click on next? Yeah, and then now I clicked on nerves path. Yeah. Control click yep. on nerves path. Yep. Control click. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna do control P, but instead of just object, we're gonna do heat transform. Okay. Hmm. Did that pop up for you guys? That did not. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, we're going to left click our little guy. All right. Make sure you're in object mode. Yep. Left click our little guy. Control click nerves path over in our objects menu over here. Mm -hmm. So on your screen, is grease pencil in this little thing on the top right is grease pencil whatever red and then nerves path is orange yes that um it has it has the grease pencil nested underneath the nerves path okay so um they're already parented okay on on there so what i want you to do is i want you to just click the little guy, mm -hmm. Alt P, and you're gonna clear the parent. Right. Okay. I, yeah, I, sw I swear I did that before. Maybe I had something else selected. May have. Okay. So now I. Now, yeah. Now click the little guy. Yeah. Control click nerves path. Uh huh. So the little grease pencil layer should be red. Nerves path should be yellow now. Yep. Now what we're going to do is control P to bring up our parent menu. Do both of you guys see this menu now? 
Yes. No. Oh. Who said no? I did. Uh, Pierce said no. I don't see it for some reason. Okay. Uh, is your mouse in the window with your little guy? There's why. Yep. There we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then what was Everything. the option we're picking on? Uh, let's try keep transform. Uh, just okay. for future reference, everything in here is um, context specific. So hotkeys have to be pressed where hotkeys exist. So uh, just keep that in mind. Because some hotkeys will do different things in the timeline than they do in the uh, work window. Got it. Cool. 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 <laughs> and this is why cool. it's so good to be able to have someone that you can talk to because like I've had that same problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, now we're going to click on NURBS path over here and select it. And you're going to come down here uh, to this little green thing. You see it? Ah, it's moving. There we go. What about you, Zach? Yeah, it's moving. He's not following the path, but yeah, he's moving. Okay. All right. So. What we're going to do is we're going to do that same thing where we're going to click the little guy. We're going to hit Alt P. We're going to clear the damn parent. Then we're going to click. Uh, we're going to control click the nervous path again. We're going to control P to parent again. And now we're going to try object with. Uh, let's try keep transform without inverse. You little shit. Why? I don't understand. Do you want to focus on this for next time, Andy? Getting it to move? Because we've already covered a lot and it's nine o'clock. It's been two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, you can make him follow that damn path. I promise you. <laughs> we um, believe in it in fact in fact let me show you all right so this is the one that i cooked up while i was um testing all this out to try and show you so i promise you you can grab this little bastard you can grab this nerve path I promise you can make them run that path, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole point of being able to make them run that path is because you can keyframe this. So I've already keyframed these guys. Yeah. So I can now hit play and they're all going to kind of move. They're all going to move along those paths. Cool. And the reason that's useful. Well, it's not useful. Uh, it's because come here you rat bastards so this is this is where it gets fun being able to move the camera around because you can move the camera while um, you, so you can hit play and then you can move the camera to see, you know, exactly where you want your stuff to be, right? Yeah. And so you can you can get a lot of good uh, shot playing around with like this. Anyway, that was the point of showing you all that. Was, it is doable. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. Cool. So yeah. So I I think that's a good focus for for next time is uh, getting them to move and to set up the shots to to capture the movement. I think that'd be a good one. Yeah, yeah, because camera stuff is its own thing. Yeah, uh, I have to tell you, like you you telling us the the shortcut to get the camera to move around like a first person shooter was huge because before that, me trying to move the camera was a pain in the ass, <laughs> and it was like turning me off to the whole thing. So it's way different. This is so cool. 
Yeah. And no, there's a awesome. ton of stuff you can do. Like you can, in the same way that we can parent this guy to move along that path, you can parent a camera to a character or an object. So if you've got like a car chase scene, you can actually set the camera up to wherever the camera would be in real life. Yep. To get that shot. Right. And as the car moves, the camera will stay in the same place if it's parented to the car. Oh, I see. I see. Cool. And and you can even set it up like it's on a jib to where as the car is moving, you can rotate the camera around the car. And it's locked to it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. Here. Gotcha. I dig it. Nice. Well, uh, thanks. Um, uh, I honestly, I don't know how many of these I can do this late um oh okay but i will try <laughs> well yeah yeah we we're i was talking to a couple of people about um a, a better time in general anyway so is thursday a good day for everyone it's just the time or is it is there a better day for me it's the best day personally okay. but again um i'm i'm flexible in certain ways too if necessary right Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good time for me also. I just goofed on the time tonight. I just I, I oh, had okay. it off and I got off work late. So oh, <laughs> sorry yeah. about that. Thursday oh, yeah. is normally my D&D night, but I can probably get them to change that up. Wait, Thursday is normally uh, your D&D night? Uh, yeah, but normally we don't get started. Uh, well, yeah, no, normally we get started about the time we started this or a little bit earlier. Um but I don't know. I, I can make whatever work. Uh, it would just be nice if it was a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. um, just because I'm old and tired. Right. Um, <laughs> so, like, how much earlier is best? Because I I try to pick a time for people for for their evenings out here on this coast. But um, yeah. if the main participants are are not going to be over here, then shouldn't be tailoring it to them. So um mm-hmm. yeah so so how how much earlier is ideal like two hours three hours earlier that's fine by me yeah two or three hours earlier would be really nice okay i can do that okay uh, especially if you're going to be recording it so that we can put it up for other people to yeah. see and... yeah okay so what time um actually let me go ahead and stop the recording here so i'm going to hit stop on it um andy thank you very much for this man this was incredible this gave yeah, me a thank lot you. Of, thank yeah this you is so a lot much. to play with this is like exactly what i wanted to use it for so that's great same um, yeah so uh oh uh, uh ben you came in late if you look in the chat yeah uh i there's a link to the cheat sheet that has all these shortcuts i've been talking okay. about okay terrific thank you yeah i'll yeah. go back and i'll look at it all i'm i'm really grateful for your time tonight as well. 